You're watching Swipe, coming up on the show this week. Going wild, how drones and camera traps are keeping animals safe. I turn citizen scientist with the app snapping live pictures in the wild. And in this week's games review, we take on the persona of a wild cat. Welcome to ZSL London Zoo, the world's oldest scientific zoo. This place is more than 180 years old, but the research they're doing here is truly cutting edge and it's having a major impact out in the wild. Here's Will. Keeping an eye on animals in a zoo is fairly easy, but monitoring them in the wild is much more difficult. Here at ZSL London Zoo, they've developed a system that uses satellite technology to keep track of wildlife anywhere in the world. So far, instant detects popped up in Antarctica to observe penguin colonies, and in Kenya it's being used to warn rangers if poachers are nearby. This is our wireless camera trap, very robust, we put it in an aluminium case, and this sends photos in real time, anywhere on the planet, over the Iridium network, to us here in London, and we use it for our citizen science work. We can have a look at what's going on in the wild, we can monitor populations, in this case penguins specifically. It's a fantastic piece of technology that lets us actually get into the field itself. Drones are also making a big impact. They're being used to track rhinos in Kenya and even identify potential poachers. And over in the USA, animal rights group PETA has been using drones to clamp down on illegal hunting. Poachers now know that they can't get away with murder. They know that they are not isolated in the woods away from human contact. It's quite possible that PETA and our drones are watching them, monitoring them and observing them for any illegal activity. One of the most established forms of technology used by conservationists is GPS. Cecil the lion, who was recently killed in Zimbabwe by a hunter, wore a GPS collar for over 15 years. But information collected by scientists can sometimes end up in the wrong hands. A few years ago we caught a poacher was arrested in Kenya with night vision equipment and GPS units with the last locations of rhinos caught. Of rhinos from which, they, which they've obviously obtained so every time they're getting more advanced in the way that they operate and our field teams need to get more advanced as a response. Like most zoos, this place wouldn't be here without help from the public. So it's really important that people know exactly what they're looking at. Well, Gemma's been testing out an app designed to turn all of us into conservationists. So this is an app that lets users see live pictures of animals in the wild? Exactly, yeah, so it's called Instant Wild uh, and it's a citizen science uh, and public engagement app so it's a great way to teach people about species ecology and conservation issues. And how does it help you to do your job at the same time? Yeah, so um, the public can select an image and identify that image and those, that data is then used uh, to help build up a species list for particular areas so whether um, like species absence and presence within particular areas and also helps us um, spot when there's endangered species uh, sighted on, on the okay. camera. Okay well I have spotted a giraffe so I'm tapping on that. Yeah. And then do I go to identify? You go to identify yeah and then you scroll um, across the identification list. There it is. Right, so yeah, you press that yeah. and then that's logged in our database and then we can use that data um, yeah, to build our species. That's a fantastic photo. Beautiful. Where are these cameras hidden? Yeah, so we mainly strap them to trees or hide we've them by rocks. Yeah, we've got one here. Um, so it's a motion trigger camera or a time lapse camera. So if an image is set to take a, an image at a regular interval. Uh, so when an image is taken, it's sent by mobile networks into the app. Um, we do have a few issues with uh, mobile signal in some of these areas because they're very remote. Mm. Uh, so we've started uh, developed our satellite-enabled camera trap. So is this a different camera to the one we just saw in Will's piece? It is, yes. So the one you saw in Will's piece is one we've actually developed because of issues around mobile signal. We want to develop a solution where we can deploy cameras anywhere in the world and get them in real time. And you're going to try and roll out more of those? Exactly, yeah. Have you ever caught any amazing sightings on these? Yeah, we had some amazing sightings. So we've had a lot of endangered species, for example, the critically endangered Java and leopard on our Indonesia camera, a lot of black rhino, critically endangered black rhino. Uh, we've also had a small mammal called a mountain mouse steer on our Sri Lanka camera, and it hadn't been sighted for several years. It's very rare until it was sighted uh, on Instant Wild. Fantastic. Good to talk to you. Thank you. We'll be gaming in just a moment. But first, here's a bite-sized chunk of some of this week's other tech news. 
Here's a new way to access everything you need while driving. Exploride is a display that allows hands-free access to maps, phone calls, text, music, and can even tell you how healthy your engine is. It responds to gesture recognition so you don't need to press any buttons. The team behind it is using crowdfunding to try and bring it to the mass market. A UK startup has developed an app designed to create truly custom fitted bras by using the camera on your phone or tablet to take over 100 measurements without taking any photos. It's thought up to 80% of women are wearing bras that don't fit properly. The app, which uses Autodesk 3D design software, launches on Kickstarter in early September. An engineer who featured on Swipe earlier this year has been back in the news after his prototype of a 3D printed robotic hand won the 2015 UK James Dyson Award. Bristol-based Joel Gibbard's technology could offer amputees a cheaper and quicker alternative to other bionic limbs. The smart home security market just keeps on growing. A camera that makes its own decisions based on what it sees and hears inside your home while you're out launched on crowdfunding site Indiegogo this week. Butterfly only records when it detects something out of the ordinary and sends you a notification. Now, we wanted to stick to our animal theme for this week's games review, so we asked Chris Slight to pick a few of his favourite wildlife titles. And here they are. So, Shelter 2 is made by a small company called Might and Delight, and you play a mother lynx looking after four lynx cubs. So the idea of the game, you begin in the burrow, you name all your little cubs, which is instantly going to build attachment for what comes later on, because you have to hunt for them, like things like rabbits, deer, stuff like that. And then you have to like go out and protect them. As they go out of the den, they walk through the world with you. So there's things like wolves that will try and attack your cubs. And you go through the entire life cycle with them. Like if they start running out of food, they will die. They will get eaten by things like eagles that will just fly in and eat your cubs. So you learn all about like the cycle of life. And it's got a beautiful palette like to the game. The soundtrack's really relaxing. And you can even have a family tree. So like when you finish that cycle, one of your cubs that survived would then become the mother herself and keeps going and get a nice little family tree. Animal Crossing A New Leaf is the latest in the Animal Crossing series from Nintendo. It's a game on the portable 3DS where you play a young man who turns up into a village and finds out, oh, you're the mayor of the village. And the village is populated by loads of little animal friends that you get to hang out with all the time. And you go around like digging up plants, making your garden, decorating your house. And there's a particular koala in my village called Melba it was really nice. Like we'll send you really nice letters and stuff out every now and again. You can send her little letters, send you little presents, and it's just a really relaxing game. It sort of reminds me of just sitting in a nice garden and relaxing, which you can do because it's on a portable system. So you can do that and play the game. Good times. Akami is it's a game made by Capcom. It came out a little while ago on the PlayStation 2, but it recently got remastered. You play as a Shinto sun god, Amaterasu, who's a white wolf. And it's sort of like a Zelda kind of game, but set in ancient feudal Japan. So you learn about all the various gods and things like that. And Amaterasu is trying to bring the sun back to the world, trying to bring color back to the world with a sort of magic paintbrush thing, which is cosmic paintbrush or something like that it's it's cool however it works but basically you go through the world sort of lighting it up and making it natural and beautiful again and like i said it's like zelda but like whisper it don't tell anyone but i think a bit better like zelda's great but you're a wolf in this thing which is great that's it for this week Take a look at Sky News on mobile and iPad for some bonus features from this week's episode. I'll see you again next week. Bye-bye.